Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on Pegasus payroll and um, furloughing employees and the administration as such. So today what we're going to look at is the consideration with regards to what we need to do in order to ensure that we can administer the system as best as possible. And that's around getting the visibility of our staff. So looking at the separate options and how exactly they should run, setting up new nominal accounts for furloughed payments, and setting up the relevant payment profiles and how that should run. Before we get started, what I would just like to confirm is that with regards to our team session, we do not have a dial-in available. So that does mean that you will need to use headphones and speakers if you do need access to the system. Can everybody hear me today on the presentation? Fantastic. So once again, the agenda for today is to review the latest guidance from Pegasus and administering the furloughed employees. And we're also going to look at the brand new reports that have been enabled by Pegasus to really help what the calculations need to be for reclaiming your furloughed values. Those are brand new. They have only been working um, literally for the past few days. So you're going to get a sneak peek on what those look like. And we'll be sending all the details across very shortly on how to load those through. But they are exceptionally great when it comes to understanding what needs to be applied when it comes to the reports. So what I'm going to do is let's jump straight into Pegasus. So within payroll and HR, what we first need to take a look at is really to ensure that if we want to separate out our employees, so we're not just talking about every single employee, but those we want to furlough, how can we separate those out in the system and ensure we can easily access them, but also have them set off to the side because for a while those payments are going to be continually the same. Well, the best option in which to do that is to create a new group and that's with under payroll, maintenance and groups. So if you already have groups enabled, you will see when you open the processing screen, the option to enter a group. If when you enter in the processing screen as such and you don't get this option, it does mean that groups aren't enabled, which is no problem at all, because once we do create a new group, you will then start to begin to see when accessing any of the reports or any of the processing screens, this new option to select which group you would like to report on. So I've already created a furlough group, but we're going to create a new one because I've got a furlough group for my monthly employees. I now want to create a furlough group for my weekly employees. So to create that group, we need to go into payroll, maintenance and group details. And as you can see here, I've already got three of the groups created. Now, again, my monthly and weekly are standard to my demonstration data, so you possibly don't have groups enabled, whereas the new ones are our furloughed groups. So to create a brand new group, we select the create new icon. The group code then can be as you need it. So I've already got a blank group, which is my default, a weekly group and a furloughed group. So I'm just going to call mine G and then furlough weekly. and hit save. Now automatically confirms that we do need to set up a pay frequency within our set options. So that's the next stage we'll go into. Firstly, before we do enter that though, is you will see that there is a group password available. Now that's for security purposes. Not every single user will possibly want access or what you would want them to have access to see all of the employees within this group. So by setting a password, it purely means that if you are planning to run any reports or access any of the employees within this group, you must know the password in order to do so. So I'm gonna save my record and close. So the very next area you want to then go into is utilities and set options. Now, it also automatically will advise that if there's anybody in the payroll system, you won't be able to access this area. So please make sure everybody in the system using payroll are out when you open this option. And as you can see now, I've got my monthly furlough, furlough, weekly and my weekly group. 
So for my furlough weekly, I'm going to select OK and a password that I want to specify. That will then load the screen and what this allows us to do is specify the payment frequency. So where you already have a monthly or a weekly group, you may want then a furloughed monthly and a furloughed weekly group. What then that will allow you to do is separate those employees based on the payment frequency. Now within the set options, you will find that a lot of the options are already specified and that's because they're coming down from the current um, setup, setup from our main default group. The option to change our payment frequency is actually options page three and the pay period. And we can drop the option down and select weekly and select OK. Now that is the only option that needs to be changed when it comes to updating these, this system and ensuring that we have all the relevant details set because like I say all of the options will automatically default from the default company. Once we've then set up our set options we then need to specify our calendar and really this needs to work in line with the calendar that is already running. So for example if we have a look at payroll, utilities and calendar, you will see I've got each of my groups available. So firstly, if I jump into my current main weekly group, it will allow me to show and see the calendar that we're working to and more specifically the start date and end date. Because if you are separating groups and you intend to move a weekly employee into a new group, for example, if you're running the same payroll dates, ideally you want to ensure that the calendars are matching. So I would want to create and make sure that the calendar for the new group is set to the start date of the 4th of the 4th and the end date to the 10th of the 4th as my first period. And then going down, it would automatically create those details. So let's do that now. Let's cancel out of our calendar and go into utilities and calendar. Select our weekly group and select OK. Again, because I have entered a password, it will ask for those details before I change anything and automatically it's advising that we do need to create a calendar and select OK. So it asks, do we want to create out without a model? Yes, we do. What is our usual pay date? So in this case, I'm going to specify a Friday and also what is the end date for the first worked period of the year. So if you remember, our dates went from the 6th of the 4th to the 10th of the 4th because my first period ends at the 10th of the 4th. I'm going to select OK to that and that creates our new calendar for this period. Now, understandably, if you're midway through your processing, you're possibly not going to be already on period one. So we also need to make sure when we process this group that you are on the correct period that requires to be updated. So I'm going to select OK. Are you sure you want to save all the changes? Yes, we do. Automatically confirms that the calendar is then set and it confirms we need to choose our pay period. So on my weekly group, I was in the pay period two. You may be already on pay period five or six. So on your new group, to make sure you are in line, we need to go into utilities and pay periods. Onto our furlough weekly group. Again, specifying the details and my first calculation period is actually going to be period two in line with the current option on our weekly group and select OK. So that's our new group set up. Um, I've just seen that we have just had a few comments with regards to um, not being able to hear. So if we still got anybody unable to hear, have we got everybody um, with the relevant screens? I'm just going to make an announcement and reply. just to confirm that everybody can hear us as we continue. Also, if you can hear, um, I have had a comment with regards to a blurry screen. Can everybody see the screen OK?
OK, we'll continue on. So once the groups have been created, if we pop into the processing screen, again, we can see all of our groups. And if we enter our first group, we will find that currently we do not have any employees in that group. And as you can see, it is blank. So what we then want to do is for all employees that you wish to be entered into that group, we need to transfer them across. So the option in which to do that is to go into processing, select our group that we want to transfer to, but also select the group that you're going to transfer from. So in our example, we have our furloughed weekly new group and we've also got our current weekly group. So as you can see, we've got a little yes symbol at each side and select OK. And again, we have a password on one of those groups, so it asks us to enter it. So the first example, we've got Joan Ellsworth here in our demo data. So what we're going to potentially say is this lady needs to be furloughed. So to transfer her into the new furlough group, just for that separation point for reporting, we select the action button on her record and go on to the transfer option. As you can see, at this point, you could change her employee reference, but that's only really if it's required. It's not needed for transferring her to a new group. But our new group code is showing the two groups I have open simultaneously and we'll select the furlough weekly and select OK. So Joan is now part of our new furlough group. If we skip across and select somebody else, we've got Scott Johnson here. We can do exactly the same action and transfer and select him to go into the furloughed weekly group. There's no need to save, those changes are automatically applied. So if we close out of the payroll processing and reopen just our furlough group, we can see we've now got Joan and Scott. So one of the next things we really do suggest is a great idea is when it comes to reporting is ensuring that you're not just on the salary or their basic pay lines amending their pay to be the um, 80%. It is a great idea to ensure you create a new payment profile for furloughed pay. Also having a furloughed pay um, payment type is also key when it comes to the brand new reports that have been created. So I would certainly suggest doing this if you are intending to use the new reports we will be going through. So to create a brand new payment profile, we're back into our payroll maintenance and into payment profiles. So we can see we've got our basic pay. If we select list, these are all the current payment types we have created. Now, furloughed pay will work exactly the same as basic pay when it comes to your taxable and IABLE pensionable options. So if there are any specific differences with your basic pay, I would just make sure and note that those tick boxes are ticked on basic should be ticked on your furloughed new profile as well. So to create a new payment profile, we select the create new icon. From here, we can select a nominal code. So at the moment, I'm just going to stick with my current salaried nominal code, which is 0110. But what we will come on to is also creating a new nominal again for that separation purpose. So we want to continue with our details are retained. So every month, the value you put in the field that we're going to enter will continue to stay that figure. It won't just set to zero. And that the factor is taxable, eniable, pensionable, holidayable, and attachable. The auto align box will then ask which field on the payments and deduction screen is usually the best place to put this. And again, for furloughed employees, really it's going to be a temporary value. So I would suggest selecting that to a temporary value for now. There's absolutely nothing else that needs to be amended on this payment profile. So once completed, we can select save and that is our new profile applied. Should, however, at the moment, if we go back to my basic pay, we can see that the nominal code it's being applied is the same W110. If you do want to separate that and make sure it is going to its own nominal code, I would suggest creating a new nominal. A new nominal creation is done under financials, nominal, maintenance and accounts. Again, it's the create new, so create new icon or control and N on your keyboard to create a new account. I'm going to call this W111 and I'm not going to set a cost centre, but that may differ for your own settings.
load pay and obviously the type of transaction that it is is our expenses and overheads and general overheads and select save so that is now our brand new account created that will automatically come available in the payroll so if we jump back onto payroll maintenance and payment profiles if we select our new code i'm going to rename that furlough and i'm actually going to select our new nominal code www1 tab out and it will confirm that it is is available and select save so that is now our brand new payment profile created and also it posting to a brand new separate nominal code when those transactions are posted so now we can start taking a look at actually our employees so if we pop into processing and onto our furloughed weekly group We can take a look at Joan under action and slightly action and payments and deductions. So currently at the moment, Joan is paid 474.56 and she's also got some overtime in there as well. So on furlough, overtime is not required. And our permanent value also needs to be removed because again, we won't be paying against that payment type. What we will however be doing under action is adding our brand new payment type, which is our furlough. And as you can see, it automatically aligns with the temporary value. So it will be 379.64 for our 80% payment. On the deductions tab, there shouldn't be any changes unless the employee is requested. As you can see, currently we have this lady already in the employee's pension scheme. So if we do a quick calculation on this screen now by action and calculate, we'll be able to see the payment that has been processed and also any pension arrangements and not net pension arrangements that have been applied. And we can then see the deductions that have been taken. Now, what you can see on Joan's system is that our pensions are 1% and 1%. Now, this could be because she's an eligible job holder. It could be that they've opted out and are just wanting to process a smaller amount. But there's also the ability when it comes to these furloughed transactions to not only reclaim the 80% furlough, but it's also the national insurance on the furloughed pay and also the minimum contribution amount for auto enrolled employees, which is up to the three percent mark so if we select ok to joan now that is her system processed and if we jump across to scott again exactly the same process it's action payments and deductions zeroizing his current permanent value and applying through action and add item the brand new furloughed pay item and what his pay should be so for most employees you may already have them in a payroll scheme um, and also a pension scheme that's applicable to the auto enrollment pension scheme settings which generally means it's taking into account all transactions and all pay between the upper and lower earnings thresholds for auto enrollment so if we take a look at the schemes i've got created here under maintenance and pension schemes I currently have an entitled work, workers pension scheme, so that's only contributing the very small amounts. And I also have my eligible job, job holders pension scheme, that, as you know, is now employers at 3% and employees at 5%. Now on this scheme, um, depending on the type of scheme you have set up, many take into account every payment type, some just look at basic pay. The new ruling with regards to uh, the pension is that pension will be reclaimable against the furloughed payment types between the auto enrolment thresholds, which is your lower earnings limit and your upper earnings limit. If you're unsure as to what those earning limits actually are, a really key point, if we close out of our pension scheme and go into utilities and auto enrolment settings, 
you will be able to see all of the upper and lower earnings qualifying thresholds within this. So if there's any queries or you're looking at calculations, this is a great screen to look at when it comes to just double checking what those thresholds are. So as we can see for our weekly, we're between £120 and £962. You may have employees, however, that are on a slightly different pension scheme. That could be that it's higher than what the normal rate would be, depending on how generous you all are. Um, but it also could be with regards to different codes and different schemes, how they run. So for reporting purposes, if you do have that point where you have employees that are on a scheme that's outside of the current auto enrolment scheme thresholds, you may well want to take a look at creating a brand new pension scheme purely for reporting purposes. And what I mean by that is, again, the government will allow you to reclaim 3% between the auto enrolment thresholds when it comes to the employer's contributions. Now, if your contributions again are higher or slightly different, that will continue. There's no need to change that. But to understand how much you can reclaim, this is a great option to apply. So if we go into our pension schemes under maintenance, I'm going to create a brand new scheme. Call it furlough and report only. Under the type, I'm going to select it's a group personal pension scheme. Now, my employer's contribution will be the 3% that you are allowed, and my employees is going to be zero because, again, I'm not deducting anything, I'm not taking it away from the payroll, I purely want to report. We're then going to specify our earnings thresholds. So we're going to say between the auto enrolment thresholds for this scheme. And we're also going to then make sure that this is only applicable to furloughed payments. And to do that, we untick the apply ease and as pensionable payments. And select save. And then it automatically then asks, OK, what payment type are you looking to specifically look at. So if we create a new record on here and type in F, it should automatically pick up our furloughed payment type, save those details and select OK. So this pension scheme is now set up to calculate the employer's contribution at 3% between the current auto enrolment thresholds and to only look at those furloughed payments. So to make sure those calculations are done, we also then need to make sure we create a deduction profile. And that again is back under our payroll maintenance and deduction profiles. If we create a new, and I'm going to call it ERS, because we can't have many letters in that description screen. Again, the nominal code if you wish to apply one. So um, if we have a look at for pension, in fact, we could just put it to our way output that will be dependent on your settings. Now again key difference here is if you were creating this as a live pension deduction profile you would actually specify your type to be an employer's pension. We're going to leave that blank because again we're not wanting it to deduct or add on to any of the pension reports it's purely going to be for reporting purposes. And select save. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't played around with the net of basic rate or anything like that, because mainly that's for obviously the employer, the employee side. So it would just be for reporting purposes. And for those employees that I wish this to be calculated on, I need to add this deduction profile. So if we go back into our group. And on to Joan, we need to go into action and payments and deductions. And on the deductions, we can see that her pension is perfectly fine. So we can then go on to action, pensions and employee pensions. And if we're creating new record, all we're going to do is apply that brand new scheme that we've created. So again, pension contributions for the employer will be three, leaving completely blank the employee elements. And the date joined. If we then action and calculate on Joan, we'll see it confirms that there is no deduction profile created. 
and that's because one thing that we haven't done is on our brand new ERS furlough, we do need to choose that pension scheme, my apologies. So we've got back onto Joan. And calculate. We can see again it's not affected any of her deductions, it's not affected the total payments, but what it has done is under our payments and deductions screen and under deductions we now have that employer's furlough amount being calculated. And that's really the main suggestions when it comes to separating your employees, because what it allows you to do is on the majority of your reports is to actually report based on each group. So you can have your to date reports, you can have your this period reports all running based on your furloughed groups and your main groups for those workers that are currently still active. What there is now, and again, brand new to the system, are some new furlough contribution reports. So because we've already calculated on Joan, there will be some payments already on there coming through on the system. So the brand new reports can be found under EOY special reports and the advanced pay and deduction list. So again, we need to select group. So this will be our furlough weekly. As you can see, that security is all the way through the system when it comes to needing a password. And it confirms what do we want to select. So on our advanced payments and deductions list, what we actually want to report on is our furloughed payments only. This is for all employees or some, depending on obviously how you want to report. But you do have the options to run by employee or by department or even gender, because this report is not only with regards to this area of the system. But once I've selected my furlough payment type and selected OK, I now get prompted with the publisher screen. And this is where then the slight difference to these new reports come in, because under report layout, what we have is a drop down option and the option to select our two new furloughed reports. Now, the reason why there's a standard report and an Excel report is the standard report will publish to screen or PDF or even print out. The Excel report will export to Excel and the Excel report, although it doesn't have all of the necessary information with regards to then uploading it for the claim, what it does have is the ability to save that Excel file and add on any of those additional parts of the information that Pegasus can't provide, but makes it a little bit easier in order to um, continue to run. So I'm going to first off just select standard report as to screen and we'll actually see that pop up. Now, because I'm logged in the administrator, I do get the designer. That's not something you would usually get. But as you can see, automatically it's picked up my employee that I've calculated. And it's also confirmed the totals for her value um, and also the 796.64 with regards to the payments that are applicable. If we take a look at that in Excel, so back into EOI special reports and advanced pay deductions, again, go back into our furlough group, untick basic, retick furlough and select our furlough standard report to Excel. It will come up and ask where you wish to save it. Automatically, it will go into the background of the Pegasus data, but you can change that location. Create the file name as whichever you wish, and you can also ask it to open the document automatically when done. So I'm gonna select publish to that. Again, my designer pops up just because I'm logged in as the administrator. But what you will then find is it will just take a moment to populate the details into Excel and Excel will automatically open on my screen with those details. So it's actually popped up just over here. So I'll drag that across. And as you can see, it's got some fantastic guidance when it comes to understanding what needs to be applied to your employees. So we can see here we've got company name and we've also got notes with regards to how this should be um, implemented when it comes to uploading this to the HMRC to make your claim. What we've also got is the reference, our start claim period, and again that would something that needs to be manually entered because it's currently not recorded in the system. 
but as you can see we've got our claim amounts so the uh, amount claimed for gross pay we've also got the employers nic contributions for furloughed employees and we've also got the amount claimed for the employers auto enrollment pension costs for furloughed employees all exactly as they stated on jones um, report and however many employees that you have it will combine all of those employees from that furlough group using that furlough payment profile to automatically give you those figures so fantastic when it comes to make it so much more easier to reclaim those furlough payments now, in order to actually apply those payments, um, all of these changes can be permanent or they can be um, removed and we'll actually go through how to retransfer them across once we um, once furlough has ended. But in order to apply the reports, what we actually have is a utility from Pegasus and it's called the Opera 3 Job Retention Scheme. So what I'm going to do is we're going to minimise Opera and also minimise uh, my PowerPoint presentation and show you my desktop. So what we will be sending out to everybody is a zip file with the Opera 3 job retention scheme folder. So all that needs to be done is when you receive that zip file is save it anywhere locally on your PC. If we open this file, what we will then see is a number of files and folders. Now, the great thing is, is they've made this very easy to apply. As you can see, we've got the copy job retention scheme reports.exe. If I double click on that exe, it is going to run the entire process for me. And what it's first going to do is ask, OK, whereabouts is my Pegasus Opera 3 system folder? So you will need to know the file path to the system folder for Pegasus and to the reports folder of Pegasus. Once that's done, we select copy reports and the system will automatically update and then apply those two furloughed reports in that report field when we ran our reports on the system. We will also have help guides available for everybody that needs to do this and also on our presentation today it is fully being recorded. So then when it comes to reversing the process, you know, hopefully I would imagine that although they've extended the furlough basis to October, people will be coming back into work as things pick up again. So we want to reverse that process. So if we pop back into processing and our furlough weekly, it may well be that we're ready to transport Joan back out of that process. So firstly, what we can do under action and pay and deductions, in fact pensions and employee pensions, is let's take her out of that new furlough scheme. So in that case we can say date left. So if we then said the date left was the 13th, so today, it will ask you do you want these contributions to be calculated for the current period and now presuming you're in a period where they're coming back to work that would be a no so I can select no to that option that means that then that record is fully then removed from her system so if we okay and then go to action and calculate we get confirmation that the employee has now left that furlough scheme it was for only reporting only but if we take a look at our payments and deductions again, we can see that that whole line for furlough has been removed. Then what we want to do is increase her salary back up and also put her back into the current weekly group. So again, and this is very key, to make sure we open both the groups we want to use the transfer between. If you open just one, when it comes to using that transfer option, you won't have the ability. You have to have more than one group selected in order to transfer. And if we then say action transfer, we can transfer Joan back into the weekly group. We can then on our pay and deductions, zeroize our furlough line and re-add the permanent value. Now what that will mean is because furlough is no longer used on there, as you can see, it's actually been fully removed because we have zeroized it. If we went on to calculate, Joe, 
and then went back to run our advanced pain deduction list report, even for both groups. You can see there's no details selected for report, so it's very easy to adjust the system to put it back to exactly how it was once those employees have come out of the furlough scheme. So I hope that has given everybody a little bit of a, an easier way to process furlough, um, an easier way to separate those transactions and how that works. I want to firstly apologise for the issue we had at the start. I think we had a bit of a problem with the um, the quality and also the the actual audio on the call, um, but I'd like to open it up to any questions that we've had. So firstly, we've had one with regards to a video copy. So yes, this will be fully available as a video and we will send the links out to absolutely everybody at the end of the presentation. What I'd also like to do is if I just uh, skip through our presentation here, it's around the key points. So we've got three main elements that are required for your claims. It's the furlough wage up to 2,500. It's the employer's national insurance on the furloughed wage, normally 13.8%, but that will completely depend on the national insurance code that employee has applied. And the minimum auto enrolment employer pension contributions, which is your 3% between your earnings limits. We have two brand new reports available to help with those claims both available through the advanced pay and deductions under the EOI special reports section of the payroll system. What I will also uh, send out is also this really useful list of links when it comes to understanding further how these processes work, how the claims work and who to access. The HMRC are obviously the main area to go to with any specific questions around the legalities of reclaiming and how it works. Um, however, the reports will certainly help. So these are a fantastic set of links should you have any um, questions with regards to any of those elements. Um, where does the furlough money go when we when we remove it? So once you've actually removed the furlough payment, when you've been processing your um, monthly or weekly payroll, each time it will be processing into that furlough nominal. So all that is again is really is a reporting area of the nominal. So it still is going to completely um, make up your overheads for your salaries. Um, but you'll have a salary nominal and you'll have a furlough nominal. And so all it means is that what you should be getting back or, or reclaiming should essentially be in that pot. Now, creating a new nominal code isn't mandatory at all. So if you'd be quite happy that the furlough payment still went to your salaries nominal as all the other payments go, that's absolutely fine. That was just advice on where some people have wanted to split out those nominal um, transactions so they can see the difference between your overheads that you're actually paying out and the amount that you should be getting back once those reclaims have been posted in. Does anybody have any other questions at all? Oh, OK, I have one. Um, if we top up salary, how does this work? So that can be in the exact same way done by creating a new payment profile. So again, if we pop back into maintenance and payment profiles, we can create a brand new payment profile called top up. Again, the nominal you wish it to go to. So that could go to my basic salary nominal code. And again, top ups are all subject to tax, national insurance, pensionable transactions. Now, again, top ups will tend to be temporary, depending on obviously the length of time somebody is applying a top up. And again, if we want to add in £100 and that £100 be there once we've fully updated and moved on to the next period, we do want to make sure we retain units. In the same way on then the processing screens. Top up can be applied quite easily by adding that payment and deduction back in to the system. Now, top ups aren't possible to reclaim, but they are, as you as you probably know, very good again to be able to specifically see what the furloughed value is and what the top up value is. So if we added furlough as well into Scott, removed his permanent value. 
and added is furlough, save 300 and its temporary value top up as 100. And action calculate. So that will obviously be paid across to him, but you will have a specific clear outline on what the furlough transaction value is and what the top up transaction value is. With regards to the brand new reports that we've created, this is where they only work with that furlough payment name. So regardless of whatever ever any other payments you make against that employee, those new reports are only going to look for that furlough payment type, which is why it's important that the payment profile is named furlough. If, for example, a calculation has gone slightly wrong and you've paid over what the standard 2500 would be, the uh, reports will actually automatically reduce that down so it is in line with the amount that you are allowed to reclaim so essentially it shouldn't allow you to overclaim based on any calculation issues hopefully uh, does that answer the question with regards to salary top up and do we have any other questions at all Fantastic. Well, fantastic questions there. Thank you very much for your time on allowing us to to go through this. I really do hope it has been beneficial to you all and all of the links and the guidance will be sent across and, and look out in the next few days for that uh, update on those uh, furlough payment types that will be really useful when it comes to processing. Um, hope you all have a great rest of the day and thank you very much. <laughs>